Hello, everyone. I see lots of people joining in, so we'll give it just a minute till I get set up over here. Okay, all right. Uh, webinar chat is open to everyone. Any questions over there? I'm sure plenty of people will have questions today. Uh, you can drop it all in uh, to the webinar chat window. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, if you can, just say, hey. Sounds good. All right. Hey, Peter. Hey, Eddie. How's it going, everyone? All right. Um, so uh, we can get started now. And I think this is going to be a little fun one uh, because it's it's something that um, all of you should be very easily able to do. Uh, and I'm sure there might be a little hiccups here and there uh, while trying to do this uh, yourself. But once you get into the rhythm, you'd kind of understand how important this is and how powerful this is. Um, so we want to improve the rankings of our existing content fast, right? Uh, and I'm thinking that you already have a few pages ranking, right? Uh, and you've published uh, quite a bit of content. Uh, and now you want to ramp it up. How, like, so you're going to write new content. You know, I mean, you. I'm sure you have a content calendar that you are executing and working on creating that new pieces, but uh, how do you leverage your existing assets to rank them faster uh, or uh, rank them higher, bring more impression, more clicks, right? Uh, all of that. So, I mean, if you truly look at this uh, from any angle that you'd want, uh, it basically comes down to this. And let me start my presentation here. The webinar is recorded. Even the last webinar is live on YouTube already. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that out, uh, do that as well. Okay, all right. So, I mean, it, no matter how you look at this uh, and from whatever angle that you look at, the only way you can improve the ranking of an existing page or um, fast, right? Like things that you can do that in your control and you know it will work definitively, it's two things. One is improving uh, or increasing link relevancy. Uh, and, and we'll get to what that really means, right? And then the second is increasing page rank or page authority. Uh, well, it although it seems like page improving page rank and page authority in terms of uh, reflective numbers, it can take some time, right? Uh, so it's not a definitive thing, but you know what what works to I mean, uh, what what is the fundamentals behind in improving a page rank or pay, uh, or page authority? So these are the two things that you need to do in order to improve the rankings of your uh, existing page fast. Thinking that you've already done, you've already written great content. It is already ranking. It's already bringing some impressions, some clicks, uh, maybe not clicks, but impressions, right? And you want to improve those rankings. How can you do that? And I'm not going to say that, hey, go and, and uh, go and do this and this exactly. And you would climb from nine to two. That's not the point. But you will see improvement in your rankings if you do two of these things, right? Or both of these things. Okay, so increasing link relevancy, uh, targeting semantic terms that a URL has potential to rank for as anchor text of links coming from internal or external pages. That's what improving link relevancy is, right? Uh, what this really means is that let's look at an example of a page that is trying to rank for these three terms, uh, types of tones in writing, examples of tone in writing, common tones in writing. Well, they are all, about tones in writing and this URL is ranking for some of this keywords, maybe not in the top uh, one or two, I mean, top three positions, but it's ranking somewhere, right? And what you wanna do is you want to tell Google that the page that you're trying to rank is about all of these things. Sure, you have written the content, you've included this keywords in your content. That's one way of saying that. 
But what Google likes seeing also is signals, right? That suggest what a page is about. And the best signals that you can provide Google or anyone is pro, uh, or is, is adding an anchor text on some of this text, uh, semantic terms uh, that we have listed over here on other pages. That's how you improve the link relevancy, right? So targeting the right kind of semantic term in your anchor text is, is, is really important uh, to increase the link relevancy. And this goes for internal or external links uh, as well. So our strategies revolve around uh, when we're doing backlinking, right? Like uh, we, we come up with a list of keywords that we wanna rank a page for, and then uh, we start building links around them. It's a similar method. You do it on your, in, on your internal pages or your external pages. They pretty much work the same way. Okay, now, oops. Okay, uh, this sort of missed out the page, but anyways, okay. So the second way of improving the page, uh, improving the rankings fast is increasing page rank or page authority. How can you do that? Uh, the only way you can do that is by getting it more and better links, internal links, uh, I mean, uh, backlinks or whatever you can, but more and better backlinks, right? Uh, what I essentially mean is, let's say uh, you have a page on your website uh, that has um, a lot of traffic coming in. And since there is a lot of traffic coming into that page, uh, Google is likely to go and index that page again and again. It's likely to be connected with many other pages on your website. And, and it just, it's a better positioned page on your website that brings traffic, whether it's direct, whether it's through organic or whatever that means is, right? If people are landing on that page and it's indexable by Google, then it's going to start seeing an increasing page rank. That's That's one. The second is, a page that has tons of backlinks, right? Uh, from coming from many other pages or many internal links coming from many other pages, they tend to pass the authority onto the page it's linking to. So uh, doing that, if you if you do that enough, you keep contributing to this, uh, to this uh, page rank or page authority and it keeps climbing up. Now it's a slow process, uh, but it's not that slow if you pick the right pages. So, what I mean by saying like, you know, picking the right pages is sure we want to keep the pages in the silo and connect them in the best possible way and spend, you know, so many hours doing that. That's fine. You can do that. But improving a rank of a page uh, that is struggling or, you, you know, it, it, your objective is to try to improve, this strategy of siloing is just not sufficient. Uh, what you need to do is you need to go and find pages where you can make this biggest uh, impact, right? So you want to go find pages which are sort of semantically related uh, and also have a very high page rank or uh, page authority or are better connected across your website. And if you do that, then you get uh, you have a chance of passing the maximum amount of uh, page rank or page authority from a particular page. Uh, okay. Now, there are many other factors to consider, right? Uh, when you're transferring this page rank and we don't wanna get into all the details of how it's calculated, how it is transferred. Just know that it, every time you you link a page to another page, you're contributing uh, to, you know, some uh, contributing to its bank, right? Like you are increasing its worth uh, and by adding the right, right anchor text on it, you are increasing the relevancy. Hence, Google knows now uh, what this page is about, what it should rank it for, uh, and how and and that it's important, right? Like so, many things we're we're considering uh, along the sides. Okay, all right. So now let's uh, move further, and we see current methods available to do this, right? And many of you do this uh, handpicked uh, people who have gotten a great hang of building internal links and just kind of finding that right page or right link to link to and make this biggest impact. Uh, if, if it's a site which is limited in pages and you have, you know, hands-on, uh, you are very hands-on managing the website and you kind of know every page in and out, 
very easy to do uh, over the period of time, of course, right? Uh, as you know your website better. But there are some ways that are currently available through plugins uh, that you can do. Uh, that uh, one is like, you know, inserting an internal link or similar meaning phrase uh, on a similar meaning phrase on a different page, right? So there are tools that can go and identify some of the similar meaning uh, phrases and insert links on that. Uh, but it's not driven by page rank. So how do you find the best pages to link to is the most important part. Uh, yet it, this works. It works because <clears throat> now you're doing it in masses, right? Without considering the relevancy of each page with each other. Uh, you're just going and finding terms to internal link to. Uh, it's, it's very it's scalable. Uh, but there are situations where uh, you are, well, I mean, finding exact match semantic term almost never happens, right? And so what you are going to land up doing is rethinking the content and editing it just a little bit uh, or maybe a lot <coughs> to add an internal link. Or you can use a plugin to quickly go and insert a link by opening each of those pages on your WordPress website, right? Uh, or if there is some sort of automation around it. Uh, but you still don't know which pages will bring the fastest result unless you know your site in and out, you know the content, you know your site traffic stats and things like uh, that to kind of understand what is making the biggest impact. Okay, so you know the challenges over there. And there are plugins for related posts. Uh, you have very little control besides tagging and categories and adding a few other minor details. But again, it's unaware of semantic terms or it's unaware of what or or how important a particular page is in eyes of Google, right? So that you can get an internal link from. So these are some existing challenges that you would see in any tools that you use, right? Okay, so solution like, like so we we think that with really thinking approach a little bit and saying like, okay, internal linking with outranking is like you connect Google search console data and find the keywords with the most potential to outperform for a given URL. So let's say if I'm trying to rank for tone of writing, I need to go and first understand what Google is giving me. If it is giving me positions on this top five, uh, uh, top five keywords and it's bringing the biggest amount of clicks uh, and my position is not one or two, right? Then what does it tell me? that I need to go and build internal links because Google is considering this page to be a little bit of authority. If I pass more authority to it, it can climb up and rank it. And that's exactly, that's why we need the Google Search Console data or any ranking data for a given URL. Google Search Console gives the best data and hence tapping into it is, is the right way to go. And then what you need to do is rank these pages. Uh, basically, what, what I mean by ranking these pages is finding page authority or a page rank of each of these pages and, 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 and just sorting them uh, in that manner, right? And then now you find the right pages to link to. Uh, that way, you your, your, your focus is on pages which will bring the biggest impact. Many times, those pages might not qualify and you can move down to other pages which might qualify uh, to get an internal link. Uh, but that is the best way to go about finding the right pages to link to, which will bring you know, the biggest impact the fastest. Um, okay. And when we are doing this internal linking, we want to make sure that we don't want to rewrite the content a lot, right? Like if you're rewriting the content a lot, then there's still an editorial process that you'd have to go through. You'd have to go and open each of those pages and edit them manually and then republish them. That that all takes a lot of time. And if you are trying to do this at scale, uh, you have to pick a battle. So whether you want to edit the content or you want to have a little less effective text liberty, but the right message, the right uh, the right outcome from what you do. And this is a classic, uh, okay, all right. Uh, and you need to naturally use this keywords, right? So now we have an understanding of keywords. We can use AI uh, to construct something that we can insert into each of this post. Uh, it's very easy to editorially approve because you can undo, redo very easily. And you just don't insert internal links, right? You're inserting a little bit of text uh, along with this internal links. So you're also keeping this pages fresh. So I'm going to go into uh, how to do this with outranking uh, as the next steps, uh, but these are the four main steps to it. 
and then we'll start looking at uh, some of the uh, how to do internal linking without ranking and some of the recent results uh, that we've gotten from the four URLs that we published. Uh, so let me cover the steps uh, over here. Well, uh, I'll wait on the steps. Let me get to a couple of questions that uh, I see in the chat and then I'll get back here. How do you determine which pages on your website have the best page rank to send links from? So uh, there are tools and APIs you can use. Uh, and there are, I mean, uh, some of the SEMrush and Href APIs are less, less flexible in finding page authority at scale. Um, so it might be a little challenge, uh, but that's why you know we have customized solution. Uh, you can still use Href or SEMrush and uh, kind of do um, a download of all your URLs and if they if, if will one of the reports give page authorities for it. It might not be as uh, updated as possible, but it still gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, or as a general rule of thumb, you can just download all the URLs based on impressions and Im just let's say impressions, uh, impressions that they got um, for a given period of time. And the highest impression page is probably going to have the highest amount of page rank. Probably, I say, because it still depends on many internal linking and uh, many external factors. And it's, I mean, uh, in internal link relevancy is not the only thing. So I say it, it's likely uh, to do that. Uh, so you can easily spot those uh, by looking at, this, at the statistics of impressions or traffic. Uh, do you believe the idea of siloing is becoming less relevant compared to the idea of building topical uh, authority and keyword clustering supporting topical authority? So I like, <laughs> and there's controversial thought to it, like, you know, whether a topical authority really works or not. Uh, and I have a, a topic that I published, topical authority, which actually ranks on first page. But uh, you can, topical authority benefits, how? Because you keep writing about a lot of information around the same niche, you start building authority in it. It's easier for you to write. It's easier for you to create templates around it. It's easier to suggest that you know what you're talking about because you've experienced writing all of these things yourself, right? So it's it becomes easier. And there are some signals, but it's there's no proven signals that suggest, right? Like that Google is going to rate you higher. Uh, as you start building authority, uh, as you start publishing more and more content, as your site becomes more and more diverse, right? You are going to cover many of the uh, different silos. So it's how you see like what's your long-term vision and are you building into that vision by concentrating on concrete ideas which are interconnected. So it's easier for you to write. Uh, it's easier for you know everybody else to understand. Uh, it always is beneficial. So I think it really does help uh, building topical authority. Uh, but... In terms of internal linking, you can achieve this very easily without without linking anything by just related links, uh, because they are in the same silo, or you could say same category, or sharing the same tag. Uh, you can internal link internal link these pages with some plugins very easily, and I suggest you should do that. Right, like your related key. Uh, every every blog is going to have a related section at the bottom, uh, and you should link within your silo, but you're still staying within the silo. Uh, and hence you're staying within the silo. You're not getting outside exposure every now and then if someone gives uh, your silo a link and because you're sharing everything, it gets transferred. But it's if, right? It's not strategic, it's uh, by chance. And what I mean by ranking this strategically is not by chance, like handpicking the page that you wanna improve and really going after and improving it, uh, improving the position of it. Uh, okay, I build websites in Web uh, Web Builder uh, and do not use WP. So as far as your pages are post type, uh, no matter what you use, it will go and insert this uh, automatically. Uh, but if you are uh, using page type, then uh, there is going to be a, a rollout. Um, I think the plugin has been already updated but our app needs to be updated for page type support. So that's going to happen likely next week where we'll support page types as well, but then you'll be liable, right? Like obviously you can undo these changes, uh, but you're gonna have to handpick this uh, and apply to whatever pages apply. Uh, there are also some styling things and we'll, we'll look into that. Uh, 
okay when 95 percent of the keywords are transactional and then uh, inf uh and then the the rest is probably informational or very low search volume could we build topical authority with uh category pages and product pages well what do you mean by topic authority right like you have authority in a niche if you're ranking for more topics uh around that particular niche and that's how you're going to build authority you can write you you can try doing that with lots and lots of pages but very thin content you're not going to make it even though you are trying to rank for so many keywords with so many pages so uh what i'm trying to say is that as far as your content is attracting clicks right that's good uh but i'm trying to understand your question when 95% of keywords are transactional and the rest informational are very low search volume could we build topical authority with category pages and product pages? You can, uh, you can, well, not topical authority. You can't, I don't know what, what do you mean by topical authority or category pages and product pages could be about totally different categories or niche, right? Uh, and then you might have a niche within a niche. So I, I don't really know like what, I mean, this could be many things and uh, a general answer to this one is it depends uh, on all the other things that I just mentioned. Um, now, Andrew, I'll take your question and then I'll move on from here. Uh, are you more focused uh, towards blog content sites regarding this than standard website that would have uh, added blog attached? Uh, again, using another platform rather than WP. Uh, we are uh, trying to uh, make it um, CMS independent. So WordPress is the start and we are working on Shopify, HubSpot, uh, and quite a few other uh, Zapier integrations. So you should have flexibility of connecting this with any platforms, with at least most of the platforms very easily that you work with uh, and uh, get this going uh, and starting. So it's very easy. I will show how this really works. Uh, we just recently rolled out an update on this. So uh, I'll cover that as well. Okay, uh, so what you need to do right now is, uh, and even for, if you don't have WP websites, right? You're okay. You can still take the text, uh, copy paste it, uh, into whatever CMS that you are working with and you'll still be fine. Yes, it's a manual process, uh, but for WP, it's one click at the moment. Uh, hopefully within the next 10 days, we have more platforms that we can scale to. Okay. Uh, so install WordPress plugin, add API key from Outranking account, handpick, um, and then you can handpick pages you want to optimize. Uh, rank URLs based on page rank data is already done for you. So then you just one click insert content snippet into WordPress uh, under most relevant text, right? Like, so there's just like four steps, no more uh, and no less. So let's go and look at this, right? Uh, so what I did was I uh, I added one sitemap of our um, entire URL and I enriched it with the search console data. So I know what keywords a particular topic is started to rank for, right? Like, so this is a new silo that we executed, right? Uh, I'm not scared of showing it, it's fine. Um, no, not really, right? Like, so I'm not even looking at uh, the rankings here. Understand what is your common goal? Is it to rank or is it to bring impressions, uh, clicks, blah, 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 right? Like it's that. So if the ultimate goal is impressions and clicks, don't look at your rankings. Uh, look at which pages are performing based on impressions and clicks and go after improving them because those are the ones that you can easily improve. Many times you'd have some important pages that you want to keep adding internal links to on ongoing basis, right? So you might also want to look at that if, if they are very important for your business and very competitive niche, right? You just don't want to add a few internal links right now and then forget about it for two years and you come back to realize that it got into the third page, right? Like you don't want to do that. Uh, so you want to keep adding them uh, those. So you can manage all of that here, uh, but your judgment should be based on impressions and clicks uh, rather than anything else. Uh, okay. So here's a very relatively new silo that we've created, right? So it's a SAS SEO calculator. You can see like it's ranking for a few. Uh, this is not ranking for any keyword. It's just ranking for its seed keyword. Uh, at the moment, it's I'm trying to rank for it, right? So we don't have any anything here. Uh, the page rank for all of these pages is zero, right? Uh, and uh, since it's, I mean, uh, it, they are all relatively new. Of course, the page rank is zero. They're not attracting many uh, clicks either, right? So my goal now here is to go and improve these pages uh, so that 
I can start getting some clicks. I can get more impressions. They start moving up. And even if one page out of this silo improves because of this uh, strategic uh, internal linking, then it will elevate the rankings of most of the pages in that silo because they are connected with the internal linking plugin, uh, which internal links based on categories and things of that nature, right? So they, they circulate, right? So your, your job, like you're trying to uh, improve uh, at, at least one page to a level where it can attract significant clicks uh, and improved rankings. Okay, so let's look at this SAS SEO uh, ROI calculator. Uh, but before we start looking at this, let me explain like what this really means, right? So this is the domain you're connected to Google Search Console. If you are not, then you will see a refresh icon here, just uh, or connect uh, connect link, click on it, connect it, uh, and then pull the data in. Uh, but start with a sitemap. This is your crawl all pages again. So uh, let's say you are with, not within the cycle of seven day uh, refresh of data and you wanna recrawl pages because you published a lot of pages or you made a lot of changes to your website and you just wanna recrawl them or you implemented a new plugin, uh, then you can recrawl all the pages by clicking here. Uh, let's look at quickly the um, update. Uh, okay, all right, so let's look at, uh, so this is your sitemap. You can add multiple sitemaps if you have it. Uh, and I've added one sitemap. Uh, pages uh, besides the ones uh, in the sitemap to crawl. So sometimes I just want to, like, this is my blog sitemap, right? And I want to allow it to crawl a few more pages or a few more directory. I can uh, I can do that as well. Uh, pages to exclude from the sitemap that you don't want to consider as part of your internal linking or all of that. So you can exclude home pages or product pages or things like that uh, over here and uh, just not worry about that. Uh, and sections of web pages to exclude, right? So you can, like, so if, you don't want to consider uh, related, uh, a related topic section as part of your internal linking, then you can add uh, the CSS uh, code for it. So we will exclude that part from reading uh, when we are collecting this internal linking data. Uh, get the API key from here. You can download the plugin from here and you can use outranking read more section as a CSS class to style the input uh, that we will add to your website when doing the internal linking. Um, it's a little fuzzy, but it's it's quite straightforward. Once you uh, have an idea of how to add CSS class, it should be very straightforward. If you do nothing, then it will just look like any other text on the website that's written above or beyond it, uh, above or below it. Okay, so let's go to internal linking. Uh, and now I have to filter it out to SAS. Okay, uh, and let's look at any of these, right? So let, uh, let's look at this. Well, let me... Okay, so SAS SEO ROI calculator. I just did a SEO audit on this. And you can see that uh, this is the, the page that it's recommending that I get internal link from. Is it extremely relevant and uh, e extremely relevant to the context of SAS SEO uh, ROI calculator? No. Uh, can it have some information that might be val uh, validated? Uh, sure, yes. Uh, I mean, it, does it, uh... but what I know is that this page will bring the biggest impact. The page rank for this is 201 and uh, it has uh, outgoing 43 links. Uh, it's still under, uh, it's considering the, the header and footer that leaves maybe around 20, which is okay for me to go and add this page in. And this will bring the biggest impact. So we've scored the pages based on the page rank. And we've written some text, right? Or this could be used as a placeholder as well on your website. And I'll show an example uh, of how you can do this. Uh, and yeah, just go ahead and insert this. And once you insert this, you can undo it as well. So let's go ahead and see this. And you can refresh this content as well. So this is uh, implemented and we'll see how, what it looks like when uh, it was implemented. You can also undo this. You can refresh the text, right? So you can uh, rewrite the text using AI and see if it gives you something a little more better. 
So you don't really have to go and find it. So streamline your SEO website cost and SaaS SEO roadmap with skilled SEO uh, rank calculator. Uh, okay, so this is great, right? Like it can be adjusted in here uh, under, under this and I can just click publish. So let's go ahead and check. Uh, okay, wow, I forgot the text, so I'm gonna do the republish here. Okay, so. Yeah, this is how it looks like. Uh, so this is how it looks like, right? Like I, what I've inserted and uh, you can style this. Uh, this, I have styled it personally. So it looks like this, but you can style it however you want. So you can style it however you want uh, and go from there. It's simple as that, right? Like you can keep doing undo, redo on all of these and just execute the ones that make sense. You don't have to go and execute each and every one of these. That's not the point. You just execute the ones uh, that are close enough to what you want to achieve uh, or uh, fits your objective. That's it. Just keep executing this. Uh, do two, three, five pages a day, and you should be all good. Um, let me take some of the questions here before I go further. Uh, okay, so Danny saying, for example, for refrigerator, when I make keyword research, intent are 95% transactional, but guides and comparisons are 5% keyword and very low search volume for this informational keyword. So I find not relevant to creating long form articles uh, as guides or comparisons uh, of best article refrigerators. So I've created topic project and try to create all category and product pages. Uh, you can, and that's okay, uh, but you're still going to need some informational content to support this, right? Like informational content, uh, ranks for longer time. Uh, it also attracts more backlinks than your uh, than than so many of the product or category pages. So it, it, pick and choose your battle, right? Like I don't know the niche, right? But uh, you might have to do that or or find a different set of keywords that you can enrich the content and maybe add a little more uh, informational keyword. There's always informational content uh, out there. So it, it really depends on your keyword research strategy. Can you please tell me my, uh, your opinion about this case? Let's say I have a landing page with main keyword design service with CTA, and I have a blog where uh, I make a post with the same keyword design service, but with more content and add anchor links uh, from this keyword to the main landing page because I don't want much text on the landing page. The scope is to rank the landing page higher than the blog page, but uh, but with the help of the blog page. So, um, if if you're trying to rank your homepage as design services, uh, you should get a link from well, your homepage technically links from all your other pages. So if, if it is your homepage, you are going to have to go and get backlinks because homepage links, I mean, ideally from almost all the pages from the header or the footer, uh, sometimes you have multiple links. So um, I wouldn't do that as uh, my homepage, but if it, if it was your landing page, um, ranking a landing page uh, for an informative keyword might be very difficult. So if you're trying to rank a landing page uh, and you know that the intent qualifies for uh, design services to rank as a landing page, uh, give as many uh, links as you can, uh, higher uh, or better backlinks from uh, some of the pages to design services, uh, as uh, anchor text design services from those blog pages to the landing page, and that should help. Uh, but provide you you still, I, I'm thinking that basically you have at least the minimum amount of content that's needed. So it's going to use a little bit of uh, AI credits uh, when it's uh, rewriting some of the stuff. It's not rewrite, I mean, it's not, uh, I mean, uh, the output is barely uh, a few uh, a few words, uh, but it consumes five uh, assessment credits uh, on internal links because we're trying to look for at least five keywords or more 
that uh, you rank for and find relevant pages. So it, it's a complex process, but yeah, it can uh, it takes about it can take up to five uh, assessment credits and a few AI credits. AI credits is very little. Uh, the output is very little. So can I have a WP post one in the WP backend at the same time? Can I have the WP post one in the WP backend at the same time? I don't understand. Uh, can I have WP post open in WP backend? Sure, yeah. Uh, just refresh the page once it's applied uh, so that you can uh, you can see the reflected changes. So it is automatically uh, identified that. That's a great question, uh, Raminder. Uh, so what we do is because we connect with your Google Search Console data, you can click on keywords and you can identify pages uh, with which are bringing some impressions, right? Or clicks. Uh, and it's not, this is not bringing any clicks, right? But I can start seeing that uh, it's attracting some impressions from here, right? And this data has changed quite a bit. Uh, but it it has started attracting some uh, uh, some some impressions, and uh, maybe um, yeah, just a few in uh, I mean um, uh, impressions. It's fairly new page uh, published maybe less than a week ago, right? So uh, this is great. What I want to do is start giving some internal links to all of these five pages, which uh, all of these five uh, keywords: enterprise SEO ROI calculator, uh, SEO estimate, SEO ROI calculator. Uh, things like that uh, and enrich it, uh, get internal links. So we automatically do this. We automatically find the important keywords that that are bringing some uh, impressions and go after those. Got it. Okay. Uh, so now let's say like, you know, you published uh, a web page a uh, long time ago and you can see that this page was updated like uh, October 6th, right? And October 8th, uh, October 5th. So they're very recent, right? Like five, uh, seven days old. Uh, so you can see that like a page has been updated like a long time ago. It's not improving, it's declining. Uh, you want to optimize the page, you can click on optimize and we'll take you to that document uh, just from here. So this is pretty much it on internal linking on how to go about improving this ranks. I'd like to show like a few uh, examples. So this is one of the pages, uh, tone in writing. We've started implementing internal linking a couple of I mean, it's like about a month, month and a half ago. And you can see that it consistently increased. Like this is not going and getting any uh, backlinkings from any other sources, just adding maybe eight or nine internal links uh, on this particular page from some good pages, uh, some okay pages. And it's bringing, uh, and it's already improving in positions. Uh, average position has improved quite a bit, uh, so we can we can start seeing that the average position is improving. Uh, also, uh, the total impressions is improving for many keywords. Okay, uh, let's look at second example, right? Like, so not all examples are made same, uh, but you kind of understand. So uh, this is impressions, but let's look at uh, total impressions here right like so it, this has also started to improve and sometimes it can take a little longer than to for google to recognize all of the signals and start improving it but you will see similar pattern uh during the time when we started uh, increasing this so this is a little steeper but you can start seeing a trend of uh, improved uh keywords and ranking even this one right uh, all of these uh keywords are being internal linked and they started improving so uh steady pages all we've done is added a few internal links and they started improving in, uh, in ranking. Try it out on five pages, right? Guinea pick five pages uh, and implement this, right? Like I'm not saying that the text is going to be 100% over there that's generated. It's going to be very optimized. It's going to bring in the results uh, and it's going to be, it's going to try and be as relevant as possible. So uh, yeah, pick your battles and go after this. Uh, and this should definitely improve your rankings of existing page. Uh, if you have an existing page that you've already created before, 
uh, and you click on optimize content, then it will take you there. It will just refresh the data on that particular document. So you don't end up creating new documents. But if the document doesn't exist, then it will create a new document for you. Okay, any other keywords? Uh, or, uh, sorry, <laughs> any other keywords? No, uh, any other questions? Give it a few more minutes. <laughs> no, either. Uh, there are there are a few ways of knowing whether the content exists in outranking already. <laughs> One is the keywords that you rank for, if there is any data around that. The second is a URL. We also save URL uh, in our document. So we have a few ways of finding out uh, that our uh, optimized content could you demonstrate more? Uh, demonstrate more. Absolutely, right? Like so I'm not well, I'm not gonna publish this content. So let's go ahead and optimize this. Uh, and create document. So it's asking me to SAS ROI, uh, SEO ROI calculator, uh, SEO rank calculator, SEO calculation, SEO service cost, uh, SAS, um, I don't want to optimize this. Yeah, optimize this. Okay, SEO for SAS. Um, Oh. Okay, so since it's not giving me the exact keywords that I want, I'm, I'm hoping to rank for, it's only showing me that the, this keywords I'm going to, I'm ranking for right now currently. So what I will do is let's optimize uh, this particular page. One second, this will definitely do it. So this is not the image. Let's uh, copy this particular URL, SEO. SAS tools. Uh, we'll go to new document. Optimize existing URL. SEO tools. When you are creating the project, you can create multiple projects for different countries if you'd like, but uh, we tend to go with the primary uh, country that you're targeting as your traffic source. So uh, you can pick a country when you're creating the project and uh, go from there. going to go fetch all the details and then we can optimize it. So optimizing it's super easy with outranking. You can use uh, automatic optimization to improve a web page and we'll see if there is anything to improve. We can go and improve those. I... Okay, uh, how it gives this recommendation of creating these pages? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. What we can also do is, I already have this document, so while this waits, we'll see we can load the first. Okay, all right, so this loaded up uh, and this is our content. I'll let me just delete this couple of lines of table of content. So uh, let's go ahead and refresh the score. So this was done before the release. So this has a little less score than 77. Let's go see, optimize it and see how we can improve the score. Okay, all right. Uh, so I can see that my heading and common terms and originality need to be improved a little bit. 
my heading, I, I can use automatic optimization to improve number of uh, headings or keywords and headings. I don't want to improve the number of headings. I will just improve keywords and headings. Uh, I will improve common terms. And uh, it, I don't want to generate originality suggestions uh, because that will require editorial work. And if I don't want to do editorial work, then I can just do this. Right, keywords. So what it's doing now, it's generating suggestions to add uh, keywords to your headings. And you can pick and choose which ones you want to add. And chat GPT-4 is slow sometimes. There we go. All right, how to do SEO, uh, how do SEO tools help SaaS agencies? Uh, so optimizing SaaS agencies, how do SEO SaaS tools uh, assist? Seamless keyword research and content analysis with SEO tools, right? Uh, it's slightly adjusted with SEO tools. Uh, so, okay, all right. Uh, you can pick the ones that you want to insert. Uh, SEO SaaS software enable uh, performance tracking, right? Like, so it's made it more informative. Um, this all seem okay to me. It's not going to try and change the, uh, it's not going to try and change the meaning or the context of your headings. It's going to try and insert some words around it. So this all seems good to me. I will go ahead and accept all. And you can see that my score went up from 66 to 74. I improved my headings by adding all the all the relevant search terms that will, uh, I mean, that will increase the page relevancy to those keywords uh, into my headings automatically. Okay, now it's generating uh, information to add common terms. We'll do that. That should definitely push it beyond 77. Uh, when you click optimize content, come up with five keywords and I uh, button to create page. Right. Uh, and the reason is because I did not create that page on uh, my apps. Uh, I created on staging. So um, I didn't have the right keywords. Uh, it was looking at the search console keywords which I was currently ranking for. And since the pages are very fresh, right? It doesn't really know which keywords it want to rank for, so. Okay, so so I took a traditional method and I just copied the URL and optimized the content manually um, using a different drug. So what it's doing is it's uh, figured out all the keywords that it wants to add. Uh, I don't have to pick everything in here, right? Like some things which I don't want to add, uh, I don't need to, I, I can exclude those. But whatever makes sense, I can go and start adding it. There might be a little review depending on how much gap you have in information. Uh, but it's not going to try and change the context of your content or add any information that is incorrect or is not researched by itself. It's still researching and adding information around this uh, from other ranking pages. So uh, you don't you you don't <laughs> you don't end up being a liar. Okay, and we can wait here a couple of seconds uh, till all of these content is finished. Usual, um, uh, now that we've uh, shifted to this new, uh, uh, this new version, uh, when we create a brief, we create optimized brief, like our content is already uh, common terms and headings and descriptions and title are all 100%. Uh, before they go out. Uh, the only thing that they have to work on is originality and construction and some of those other things. But besides that, all good to go. It's still quite a few sections that it has to write. It writes two sections at a time. So any other questions, drop it in while we wait and we'll accept all of these to see common terms go to 80 plus.
drop it in. We got last few minutes. Uh, any other questions, drop it in while this is getting done. Still about a minute away. So originality um, sometimes uh, can be tricky and it's in the cases where so one of the pages in top five has a uh, uh, very high originality and then it's just very difficult to meet that. So I would sh I'll show you how you can uh, reach an optimal solution for yourself instead of going strictly based on based on scoring. Uh, you can go on sometimes you know scoring plus a little bit of uh, your judgment and I'll show that as well. Okay, last one here, and let's accept all. Okay, our common terms uh, uh, went to 100, so that's great. Uh, now we can move on from here and uh, finish up our original. So we have already reached a score of 78 here, it, despite uh, of our headings and originality not being uh, close to that. Uh, I love the concept. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this one, originality is very uh, less and uh, we'd want to improve some originality in here. Like, so what, when originality is less, what it means is that everything that you've talked about is being already talked about. Uh, not sentence to sentence, but word to word. If you were to compare uh, the words that you have on your web page are all present in, uh, on, in the other pages. Right, like, so that's the biggest problem. Now, this is a particular case, and I wanted to show you this. So you see that in top five or top six, right? Like you have someone that is uh, going at 29, and hence it is recommending that we go at 29. But you know, three, 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 four, uh, three, they all rank pretty well uh, as well, right? Considering some other factors as well. So that's okay. And my current score is 3.31. So you don't have to go bonkers on this and go after 29% improvement. But what I'd hope for is at least decent five to six, right? Like that uh, goes about a majority of this people, right? So I would just aim for that. You will start seeing some score improvements and go based on the actual score and not justifying uh, or not going after 100% originality score every time or any matter of fact, any of these things, right? Some of this are very mechanical in nature. Some of them are uh, partially AI, so partially uh, mechanical. So you can understand they're all gonna have a little bit of limitations. Uh, and this is a special case. And I'm thinking that you had a special case like that as well, where uh, your content was not significantly or not significantly, but not different enough uh, yet uh, you know, same uh, to different of your competitors. So common terms kind of depict that, how similar is your, or how much coverage you have uh, among other co competing web pages. And this is originality. It's the amount of net new information uh, that you have on your web page compared to all the other pages. And this page has like insane amount of uh, net new information. Uh, and still it's not ranking on the top for, uh, you know, first, right? So it, it still has other factors, right? So consider that, right? And see this graph chart and, you know, you can go after like maybe five or six for this particular uh, example, or just, you know, ballpark it, but don't have it so low that uh, it's, it's not original enough. So Danny, now you'd have to go and download those list of keywords from Google Search Console or um, any other tool, adjust it into the you uh, into the upload format of Ahrefs or SEMrush at the moment, and upload it. That's the that's the best possible way. It's creating tons of complexities around uh, how we want to manage clustering, uh, and uh, it, we will add the feature of uh, potentially clustering your existing pages in clustering itself, but. Uh, not as a separate part, and it was just creating more complexity for users than uh, it was helping. So that's why we had to get rid of it. But 
yeah, at the moment you can do that. Okay, any other uh, QA question? Thank you so much, Benedict, uh, for uh, those great words. Uh, all right, sounds good. Uh, I see a few people joining in just about now, uh, and we're about to finish here. So um, last couple of questions. Uh, I mean, uh, anything that you guys want to address, ask, uh, ask away. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, it was great seeing you all. Uh, it was a great session. If you have more questions, feel free to drop it in. Uh, the uh, Drop it into support or drop it in our Facebook group and we'll address it over there. Uh, yes, definitely we'll explain more over there in uh, the upcoming webinars. Uh, we're just about two minutes away, so we want to respect everybody's time. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys next week uh, and hope you guys have a wonderful uh, weekend ahead and thank you all for coming. All right. Bye.